Alright, here we go. Here we are. First steps into China. Yes. I did not expect that at all. You cannot buy a ticket with credit cards. Well, there's a lot of police, so maybe they can help me. And you have to go through security every time you go in the metro. Yeah, ask the police, but they don't really speak English. <laughs> I have been to China for the very first time, and as you can see, it's been a hell of an adventure. And in today's video, I'm gonna share my honest thoughts, the truth about my trip to China. And I have a very exciting announcement, especially for my Chinese subscribers. So you wanna stick until the end of the video to find out what that special announcement is. And I'm telling you, you really want to hear this. I want to talk with you about my honest opinions and the real experience that I had when I went to Shenzhen in China. This was my very first time I went to this country and I want to share with you my honest thoughts and really how I experienced my travel to that country because you hear a lot of negative news and a lot of negative stories you know about China in the Western media because I am from Europe so we have a specific image about China and what it has to look like you know because we don't see very much about China we don't see like TikTok videos or Instagram posts from people in China so it's really hard to picture ourselves what it will look like what life in China would look like so before I tell you about my experience I want to firstly say that I am not paid by the Chinese government or any other parties CNN BBC whatever you've all been commenting under my Chinese videos no one is paying me to make this video this is literally me sharing my honest thoughts about my travel to China nothing more than that Okay, so without further ado, please like this video and subscribe to my channel as well. I really appreciate you following me, joining me on the trips around the world and the special news that I have for you at the end of this video. Oh my God, you're gonna love it because I am so excited. Anyways, first up, when I arrived to China, a lot of chaos happened, right? You saw that in the video where I took the bullet train from Hong Kong to Shenzhen and I went through customs, immigration, I got the Chinese stamp in my passport and everything went pretty smoothly, I would say. I really expected them to ask for a return ticket, to really ask me questions, what are you gonna do in China? Where do you come from? But none of that was true. None of that happened, actually. They literally just looked at my passport, they put a stamp right next to the Taiwan stamp, actually. And without any questions, they just let me pass. I enter China. And I know Hong Kong is also part of China, but you don't get the stamp of China, right? So the entry stamp of China is really with the border Hong Kong, China. So that's when I got the actual China stamp in my passport, a nice red stamp. So I'm really happy. I'm kind of collecting stamps, you know, from all the countries in the world. So this is a, a great stamp to have part of my stamp collection. So the first few steps went pretty smoothly. I entered the country easily and that was all good, you know? I thought, oh my God, this is going better than expected. Let's just go to my hotel and that's it. But it wasn't that easy because I discovered I couldn't pay with credit card and I discovered that there were no ATMs to get any cash. So I was kind of fucked. So it took me over an hour to download Alipay, figure out how to pay and stuff like that. So that was pretty complicated, right? So I would say prepare that part. And I made another video about my 10 tips before traveling to China. I will post that video later. So I would say that is kind of annoying, right? That we cannot pay with our own cards. But I mean, for them it works because every time you want to go into the metro, you have this Alipay QR code for transport and you scan the QR code and you enter the subway. It's really that easy. With the QR code in Alipay, you also pay in restaurants and WeChat Pay as well, of course. So actually it makes it very easy, but what if your phone runs out of battery? Then the only option you have is cash or a Chinese card, you know, if you have a bank account in China. So as a foreigner, this is a bit difficult, but once you've set up Alipay and WeChat Pay, you're literally good to go and you can pay everywhere in China, it's really easy. And what I saw is that they have security at every single metro station. Police is surveilling that. So let's do that and we'll be going to the metro. 
station. In Europe, we don't have that. Every time I wanted to take the subway, I had to put my little fanny pack into the security scanner, right? There were like security agents there with uh, blue and red lights. I thought they were police, but y'all in the comments told me it's just security, it's not police. <laughs> Actually, you know, that surprised me because that's very safe. I thought maybe first it was about controlling and stuff. That's actually not true. It's just to guarantee the safety of everyone there in the public transport. That is a very big plus point, I would say. I was very surprised about that one. Then when I arrived to Shenzhen, I saw that the streets were clean. There were a lot of delivery drivers everywhere. They didn't drive on the street. They were driving on the sidewalk. So everywhere, these little minions, I called them, right? Because they were all yellow. I really had to be careful with where I was going because these minions literally came from every direction. So, <laughs> well. But yeah, the cleanness of the city center was surprising me as well, you know. I thought actually before coming to China that China was gonna be very dirty, kind of. Because I haven't really seen any pictures or videos about China before I traveled there. So somehow, because of the stories I heard growing up in, in Europe, I, I thought China was gonna be a bit dirty, underdeveloped, but none of that was true. Shenzhen was crazy. These skyscrapers were insane, out of this world, beautiful. It was way cleaner than Europe, to be honest. Especially some cities like Paris is so dirty. So I would say Shenzhen was 10 or maybe 20 times cleaner than Paris, for sure. So next up, I went to a park, Chongsan Park, and I just walked all the way to the top and it was weekend. So a lot of people were there in the park with their families and children playing with their kites. It was amazing to see. Everyone was picnicking there, eating, spending the day in the park, right? And everyone was laughing and having a good time. And some people in the comments said that this was all staged, but no, none of that was staged. People were dancing on specific Chinese songs that to me sound very much like Arab language, right? Arab sounds. Thinking back to that moment, I don't know, these people really made me smile. I think they looked so happy and free, so I did not expect that at all. I thought people were, well, not necessarily sad, but like more, I don't know, like holding themselves back, you know, because I thought they were being controlled and, su and, and supervised all the time, but none of that is true. They were living their best life there in that park and the children seemed so happy. So I really love to see that. And I don't know, like, yeah, that was a very positive surprise. And yes, there were cameras everywhere. Every intersection had cameras and also on the top of the mountain there, a lot of cameras, like many more than you would see in Europe, right? But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because because of these cameras, it is much safer. And if someone is robbing a supermarket, then that thief can literally be caught in less than five minutes because they have cameras on every intersection. So they can follow him everywhere he goes, you know? If someone does a bad thing, of course, the police wants to catch that criminal as quickly as possible. So I think these cameras are a huge benefit for the security of the country and the people. So actually, yes, it caught my attention, but I wasn't bothered by it at all. Also in Amsterdam, the country where I'm from, the Netherlands, they have a lot of cameras hanging everywhere. So they can supervise the streets, right? So they know exactly where the pickpocket is and they got a phone or something and they run off, then the police can literally arrest them within 10 minutes. Actually, if you have nothing to hide, then why would you care being recorded for the safety of everyone. One other thing that surprised me is that there are a lot of American westernized companies there as well. So McDonald's, Nike, Apple, Zara, they are literally all there. I didn't necessarily expect that to be honest because they also, you know, have no Facebook, they don't use Google, they don't have Instagram and they have a different uh, type of TikTok, right? So I thought maybe they had their own stores for Nike, Apple and McDonald's, right? They had their similar type of stores, but not really that brand. I mean, that surprised me also a little bit. It was literally like I was in a European city, but then much cleaner and more developed, I would say. And that was actually what I was not expecting. You know, in every aspect, China has surprised me and I cannot wait to go back to China. So I have a very big announcement to make, especially for my Chinese subscribers, because now that I have published all my videos about Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, like Shenzhen and Macau, it is time for me to move on to other countries. I've been to Singapore, I've been to the Philippines, South Korea. So all of those countries are still on the planning to be published. 
So from upcoming Wednesday onwards, we start with those countries. Singapore, and then we go to Borneo, and you see the orangutans. We go to the Philippines, where I do a road trip all by myself on the moto, and it's gonna be incredible. The views are gonna be spectacular. And in El Nido, one of the most famous places in the Philippines, we're gonna do a boat tour, and I'm gonna show you my amazing hostel there as well. Before we move on to Japan again, we go to Nikko, a winter wonderland. It is so beautiful, oh my god, but very cold. And we of course visit Osaka, Kyoto, Nara, and we move on to the islands of Japan, Okinawa, where I spent a very good week there and I made a whole road trip through the whole island which is going to be impressive. You really don't want to miss out on these videos. They're going to be awesome. So the news, obviously, you can guess it already, is about China. My first China series did very well, and I got a lot of subscribers and a lot of engagement on these China videos. I got so many positive comments. People loved my vlogs, and they want to see more. And actually, I also want to see more. I want to see more of that beautiful country that literally blew my mind. So the big announcement I have to make for you today is that I am going back to China yeah! and I have already purchased my tickets and that is not the only thing because this time I'm not gonna go alone but my little brother is coming with me he has a lot of experience with cameras and recording everything so he will be by my side filming everything so we're gonna have different camera angles and I just want to promise you that the vlogs that will be published about the places that I go to are gonna be amazing all I know is that we're gonna visit Shanghai and Beijing. And I'm gonna try my best to do as many day trips or a couple of nights in the surroundings of Shanghai because there are many places, there are many different cities that are awesome to check out. So as we speak, I am making a full itinerary. I'm gonna plan and prepare my trip, something that I didn't do the first time when I went to Shenzhen. I'm gonna do my very best to find the most amazing places to cover in my video. In this trip, I'm going for 15 days to China, which gives me enough time to check out Shanghai and Beijing and some cities in between. I am very excited for this trip and I cannot wait to go back. And the best thing is, I'm already gonna go in one month. So, in the meantime, make sure to check out my other videos about Singapore, Philippines, South Korea, and all the other videos that I'm gonna post and wait for those China videos because China Series 2 is coming up, but I have to obviously record it and edit it, so give me two, maybe three months max, but I will publish the Series 2 China as fast as possible. So while that is off my shoulders now, I am very happy and I cannot wait to uh, go to China and make another video series about this beautiful country. I know you will be here following me and coming with me on this journey. And in the meantime, if you wanna see some more behind the scenes, exclusive content and updates about my China trip, then definitely become a member of my YouTube channel. For a small fee every month, you get to see these member exclusive videos and you get early access to new videos. So you will literally be the first ones to see the new China videos. Also, when I am in China, I will publish member-only videos. So if you want to see more about my China trip in the moment, in the real moment that I am there in China, definitely become a member so you are able to see these behind-the-scenes videos in real time when I'm in Shanghai and Beijing. Well guys, that was it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you are as excited as me about going back to China and shoot more videos of that beautiful country. I hope you will stay here for the ride and I hope also that you will enjoy the upcoming videos about all the other countries. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you stay up to date and you will get a notification every time I publish a new video. Thanks again for watching, I really appreciate it and let's move on to Singapore and then to all other countries before going back to China. Alright guys, see you in the next video. Bye!